he definitely shocked the system, which it'll cause like a initial dip. Yeah. But it'll come back probably stronger, honestly, but it's just that initial like shock factor. Right. But all righty, Charles, welcome to the podcast. I'm glad we finally got it on. Got you here. Um, I know we've been talking about doing this for a while now. So I'm super stoked to have you. Excited to be here, Connor. And um, before we get into this, just want to thank you. And, um, you know, I honestly, I mean, hats off to you for the community that you've created throughout Brevard. I mean, it's been really inspirational to watch. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so Charles and I actually met in the gym. Our, we're around the same age when I first moved here. Um, so he's one of my OG friends. We, um, we don't like hang out all that much, but we seem to kick it off whenever we do. Um, so he's been a great friend of mine and now we're actually, you know, dabbling in some business together. Not quite yet, but we're, we're getting, we're getting there. there. We're getting there. We actually, um, you know, back to the gym story, met through beach bodies, mutual friend of ours, Blaine Smith. Yeah. Who's still a good friend of this day. Um, but ever since then we've been, you know, yeah. we've kept in touch. Pretty good for contact. Sure. So hit that nice six mile run the last couple Sundays ago. We're starting to put some miles on your feet. Yeah. So Charles used to text me and be like, Hey, let's hit a five miler this this morning. And I'm like, You're crazy, dude. I don't even run one mile. <laughs> I was like, I'm struggling to run one mile, let alone five. We're we're getting there. So yeah. super it's, excited. Running is a progressive thing. Like you can't like I started wrong so many times at running where I just ended up quitting. Where this time I really did start at a mile here, mile there, mile here, mile there, then two mile, two mile, right. three mile, three mile. Well, it's very it's very counterintuitive too, right? When I think when I told you the first time, I said to run faster, you have to run slower. Yeah, you've and got you've got to focus on your heart rate, bringing that down because over time your heart rate's eventually going to drop and your pace is going to decrease. So it's and it's, I've been running since end of October now, and I went out for a three miler two days ago. Mm-hmm. And I was running at like an 820 pace and I was like, or I think it was 820. I don't quote me. I'm pretty sure it was an 820 <laughs> pace, but it was like gravy. I was just running. Like right. You just, your body just adapts. Right. It's really cool. Right. It's just like the gym, you know, it's, 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 um, progressive overload. Yeah. So, and, and you, your body picks up on that and eventually over time it just starts to adapt. So. Yeah. It is for me being like, I, I push the envelope on pretty much everything in uh-huh. life. Um, so for me to run at a 10 minute pace and be like, I have to run at a 10 minute pace in my head, I'm like, I can run faster than this, but I need to run slow. It screws with your mind. Yeah. And I think when we were talking about this, maybe after one of your runs, I sent you a podcast about just, you know, the, even in life, just slowing it down, you know? And no, that podcast was super good and he's totally correct because it hit, that hit me hard. I was like, wow, I do need to like chill out a little more it 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 helps i mean it, you know take one step back take two steps forward yeah and, but it's like it's hard for me to slow down like i told you yesterday mm-hmm. i had a meeting in boca at 10 which is like a two-hour drive get in the truck truck doesn't run right. i had to get back to the house get back in the car go pick up brody go get to boca we had our meeting had our lunch whatever drove all the way back to get to toyota then we're starting 75 hard today right so i was trying to get my grocery shopping done my meal prepping done it's like like it's tough to catch a break in life yep. sometimes. Like, I, so speaking to that, I mean, I deal with a lot of the same, you know, especially in business, just learning to slow it down and focus on the task at hand and um, have talked to a couple of buddies of mine about meditating. And, you know, I, I was, I don't want to say I was opposed to it ever really, but it never really was something that I saw myself doing. You're like, what is this hippie shit? Right, right. <laughs> you know, I was kind of just like, yeah, I don't need this in my life. And um, started implementing that a little bit, just first of the new year. And I can tell you that it's something I look forward to now. Oh, so you just started yeah. pretty much. So 10, oh. 10 minutes of guided meditation every day and just learning to just learning, no meditation is awesome. Learning to focus on the breath. And I, um, I was, I mean, grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, pretty much red, redneck, right. Right. hard working blue collar stuff. So meditation was like, you want me to what? Right, like, right, right. Um, but no, I, I, really gotten like meditation right around 21, 22 years old. And I've been doing it meditation slash prayer now, mm-hmm. but, um, it huge game changer. It's a big game and changer. I say meditation and prayer, but it's not the same. Yeah. Um, meditation is much more for yourself and mm-hmm. much more visualization, which I see nothing wrong with that. I think it's huge right. because it keeps you accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, I've been, I've been meditating for quite a few years now and it's, it's huge. I mean, and you're going to get, you'll get better at it and better at it and better at it. And you'll start having these, like, I don't like, I've tried explaining it before and I really can't just like deep, like deep mind space feeling experiences. Yep. Yep. And they almost like trip you out a little. Like you literally, like once you come out of the meditation, you're like, what was that? What was that? Yeah. It, like, and you don't have an ex. Like, I literally have chills right now. <laughs> like, I had this one particular meditation, not to get super into it, but like, I was meditating one time and I got this weird, like, wavelength rush wow. through my whole body. Wow. And I literally, like, I just stayed in it, but I was like, what the heck is going? Wow. And I've only ever had it once. Wow. And I started trying to meditate for it, and I started researching it because it was it was like it was like a download, man. Yeah. It felt weird. It really felt like someone was just like plugged in. That's crazy. Um, and I started researching it, and there's like a few things they like call it like a God kiss or mm-hmm. like you you know you kind of connected to the universe, whatever, right. whatever it may be. I don't know. I'm not quoting anything once again, but. I started like trying to meditate towards it. And then I was reading and they're like, if you're trying to get to it, you won't. Wow. It's like a state of like freedom. You have to get to that point of like, right. Just nothing. Right. You know? Right. It's super interesting. Meditating I, to nothing is where you access everything. Right. Weird. And it's, you know, as a follow up to that, I've been meditating, trying to visualize, but then afterwards journaling, which I know you and I both yeah. share that same, We're both big journalers, which I think has been key. So I'm huge on blank sheet Mm -hmm. journaling. Like I like to have like no lines, no dots, like blank pages. And I actually, my grandma got me a journal for Christmas and it's um, structured. So Mm -hmm. it's three goals, three things you're grateful for, three things you want to improve on. And there is a little, like a little doodle section, Mm -hmm. but I've been actually using it. My grandma got it for me. I love my grandma. Uh I got to use it. (laughs) Um, And it's pretty cool. I like it. It's a little more where I like... A little more structured, and it, mm-hmm. I think it's good for me. I've been interesting backstory. So I've been keeping a journal since my junior year of college. Oh wow! Um, you know, and when I moved to well, junior to senior year, um, and I was actually graduated when COVID was in full effect. Everything was online, and my dad came up to the dining room table one day after I'd finished an exam, and he said, "Look, you need to start taking." you need to start journaling about this moment in time right now with the pandemic and everything. Huh. So from that point forward, I've kept a journal for each bucket of my life. I call it living, working, and um, learning. So I keep, those are my three buckets. Three try separate to, journals. Try to keep three separate journals. Try really? To, try to keep them pretty consistent. Wow. Um, um, yeah, if you looked at my journals, you'd think I was crazy. <laughs> I like I write about anything I think about, and like, but I just like dump it out. Like, uh-huh. this is what happened to the store. This is what I'm irritated yep. about. This is what I don't understand about life. Like, well, it's it, like you said, it's an open page that you can go to and just spiel out all yeah. those thoughts, you know. And and I think in this day and age too, it's it's proved to be effective for a lot of people. And so. like Kaylee and I both have journals, and like, as far as I know, we never touch each other's journals. Like. Uh-huh. I've never touched hers, and I don't think she's ever touched mine. Right. I think it's a very, like, private, like, is. journaling is a very private thing. Yep. And, I mean, you could read it, but I really don't think it's going to make sense to anyone. Right. I mean, mine are <laughs> under my bed. Nobody's yeah. touched them, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, mine would be pretty far out if anyone looked in looked at them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so back to your college experience, because we were yep. talking about this earlier and talking about this on a run last week. Um we kind of had that same like weird drift once yep. we got to that college age. So I moved to Florida at 21 and pretty much was living at my great grandfather's house with no direction. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I got a job. Well, actually, no, I went three months without a job. Wow. So like when you meet, met me at Beach Bodies, I was living off savings that I saved up to move, but I didn't save up to move to Florida. Wow. I saved up to move to North Carolina. When I didn't move to North Carolina, I went into that complete, like, 21-year-old, like, well, I'm going to do whatever I want. Right, like, right, <laughs> right. Like, right. So I moved to Florida, and I was, like, got here and kind of went back and forth with my parents, like, yeah, I'm going to come home. I'm not going to come home. I'm going to come home. And my great-grandfather was 95 at the time. And I said, hey, Grandpa, do you mind if I stay with you? He, uh, he looked at me and goes, I don't give a damn. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. Um, grandpa. Weeks go by. I asked him, like, hey, am I bothering you? Like, do you mean head back to, like, head home? I don't give a damn. And I'm like, 
All right. Wow. Well, I'm staying. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, two out and give a damn, I'll stay. Right. Um, but anyway, I was having a great time, uh-huh. but zero direction. Like, I was going to like an online school, like whatever, which online college is bullshit. It I'm is. sorry. Yeah. Like, you can't learn. I mean, maybe some people can, but I can't. Like, it, it was so difficult that last semester of school graduating during COVID with everything being online and really just trying to be focused, you know, and I think that that took away a lot of the same undergrads who graduated at that time. It took, it took away from a lot of the experience. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, so yeah, like with that being said, I think we kind of hit that same wall of like, you graduate, you graduate high school with like a fake perception of life. Yeah. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to get a job. Da, 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 da. And then you get to college and you're like, mm, right. Like, is this what I want? Or right. like, what am I going to do with this? Like, right. there's so many questions that pop into your head. And I feel like the system like doesn't really answer them. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, you're getting a degree. Right. And you're like, well, cool. But what do I like? What do I do after this? Right. And you're like, well, you're getting a degree. Right. <laughs> right. Like, well, it's, it's interesting, too. I mean, it's it's, you know, we could go on and on about the whole student loan debt. I mean, to your earlier yeah. point, it's like. Um, I believe, don't quote me, but student loans are the only form of debt that you cannot get foreclosed on. So it's just the system giving you money to really just, you know, because like you said, we're in doctrine to think, okay, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get a four-year education. I'm going to take all of this book knowledge and apply it to a career field, respective career field, whatever you're interested in and so forth. And I, I think that, you know, I'm of the belief that, you know, four-year education in undergrad school is not necessary for a lot of the big jobs out there. No. You know, I mean, especially what you and I both do is running businesses. It's it's it, it's not. I know? wish, like, high schools would drill, like, personal skills. Yeah. And journaling and reading, like, at, reading self-help books in your own – it would be hard to monitor, but, like, in your own direction. Like, because there's so many different books of, like – like I'm reading a book right now. They talk about a lot about tonalities and how to right. talk to people. Do you whisper? Do you like engage them? Or do right. you talk loudly? And blah, 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 right. you know what I mean? And I'm like, wow, like what if they taught this in school? Like right. you'd have like an army of America would be full of salesmen. Right. Like, right. Well, or even, you know, to the blue collar trades, you know, like the plumbers of the world, the HVAC guys. It's like my, my dad's worked in construction since he was a junior in high school and wow. he's now 63. And, you know, he tells me stories all the time about guys coming out there with undergrad degrees and, you know, they think they, they know everything and they get out there and they don't have any idea of what's going on because my dad's been swinging hammers for 40 years, you yeah. know, so there's, there's something to be said for that for sure. Well, yeah, you can only learn so much from a book, like, right. you just can't learn it at all. Right. Um, so like when you got your junior year of college, you started journaling and stuff, mm-hmm. like. I'm sure you probably hit some kind of wall there. I'm mm-hmm. assuming, or else why would you start journaling? You know, you right. got to hit a wall to right. kind of like find new stuff. Um, but like, what are some other things you did to like kind of figure your way? Because I mean, you're pretty successful now. You're doing pretty good. Well, thank you. I, um, you know, so it was actually my freshman year of college where I started going through just a couple. I think we all go through that phase of the transition, like you were talking about earlier, from high school to college. It's like adult puberty. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and made the transition from the University of North Florida to UCF. Mm-hmm. And I had a couple buddies at UCF at the time. Um, but other than that, didn't know a soul. And um, ended up joining a fraternity. And I'm still in close touch with a lot of those guys that oh, were in really? my fraternity. Um, I would say probably five or six. We do business together. Some of them are brokers over in Orlando and so forth. And oh, awesome. So that community in and of itself was a great experience. But as you know, only for so long. You snap out of it after about your junior year. And um, so coming out of junior to senior year, COVID started hitting us and whatnot. And with all the classes being online, I was thinking to myself, I was like, what better way to take advantage of this time than just to start networking with people over in Orlando? Mm-hmm. Um, so started spending a lot of time with developers, guys in the construction business, other commercial real estate brokers and learning about their field of work. And to be honest with you, I had, you know, devoted some time to school at the time, but definitely not enough to really just dive deep into the books. And did you go to school for this? Is that what you went to school? I went to school. So my undergrad degree is in finance, um, and economics. And, you know, I went in believing I was going to be a civil engineer. Okay. And, you know, the two buddies I lived with my junior year or senior year um, were actually both engineers and our personalities are very much different. Huh, so I, interesting. I, I 
wanted to be in a business where I have a deep passion for numbers, so understanding numbers, um, really enjoyed finance and being able to apply that towards development. And, you That's know, awesome. because my grandma would tell the story when I was, you know, three or four years old, riding around in her minivan growing up. I would point to all these little job sites going on saying, grandma, that's my job site. Grandma, that's my, you know, and that's so it, it's, it's funny to fast forward, but to be honest with you, when I graduated school, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I mean, I came out with, you know, a good network over in Orlando and tried to build a network back here because I knew that I wanted to do something with finance, development, numbers, and just kind of let it rip yeah. after that. So. It's funny when you look back and you're like, wow, we had no, like, right. I look back to when we opened the store, I'm like, what were we doing? Like, right, right. How, how did we make it? And at the end of the day, those make some of the best stories too. Yeah. I mean, your story, like I've said, is very inspirational. Yeah, so. it was pretty crazy, like yeah. looking back on it and like the community we've built now, and it's like, wow. I, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, we like worked hard at it, but like, we also like, it was like looking back, it was just like goofy. Like we hung out in the store so much, right. like no uniforms, no like there was no structure at all. Like right. We kind of like we'd watch like Netflix on the TV. Right. Like, like right. Just like, right. Well, it's it's funny too, because when I um when I was about to graduate, I was talking to my cousin's husband, who's a um broker over in Winter Park. And um, you know, I was explaining to him what I wanted to do. And he said, have you ever thought about commercial real estate? And I said, no, not really. And um, he was with a big company, JLL at the time. And he told me flat out, he said, to be honest with you, you know, these big commercial real estate shops only look for people with big book of business coming in because it, they know they're going to be able to produce revenue for the company and whatnot. And I kind of set out to prove him wrong. I was going to apply for every damn position that JLL had at the time. And um, sure enough, got the time of day to sit down with one of their interviewing people and um, was extended an invitation. But in tandem with that, I was creating a network back here uh, with the guys over at Lytle Beckner Robinson and um, sat down with Rob Beckner for coffee one day. And him and I just hit it off, man. That's and awesome. Ended up. And it sounds like you guys have an awesome team. team, too. We have a great team. And, you know, I've been very blessed to, you know, have the platform there and to be able to work underneath Rob and, um, do business in this market. So it's been, it's been great. That's huge. So. Awesome. All right, man. Well, let's, um, I think we should wrap this one up because, uh, people's attention span is so short. Let's do it. But we definitely hit another one here soon. Yes, sir. Sounds All right. good. Well, Charles, thank you for being here. And if you need a commercial realtor, Charles is your man. We'll link his, uh, IG and stuff here below. Connor, right. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Of course.